Good evening and welcome everyone. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Yolanda Boota and I'm the Operational Project Manager from Wright Milner. Thank you for taking the time to join our direct restorative webinar hosted by Dr. Lewis McKenzie. We are a full house tonight, which means that you are still serious about clinical education. We realize there's a lot of webinars happening. However, restorative dentistry remains a hot topic with several aspects from shade selecting to finishing and polishing, which will be covered tonight. The technology of composite keeps on evolving and Dr. McKenzie, therefore, will also cover the new composite that we will be launching soon called OptiShade. Dr. Louise McKenzie will present and after the lecture, we will have a question and answer session. So please feel free to load all your questions in the question column during this presentation. This webinar is sponsored by Kerr Dental and Nelia Marsberg from Kerr has also joined the webinar tonight. Wright Milner is the exclusive agent of all the Kerr products in South Africa. Now, just to give you a little bit of background about Dr. McKenzie, he has been a general dental practitioner for 30 years a clinical lecturer at the University of Birmingham School of Dentistry and at King's College London. He's also the head dental officer of Denplan, the UK's largest provider of dental capitation plans. Thank you, Dr. McKenzie, for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate us. So please sit back and enjoy this webinar. I would now like to welcome Doctor on stage with me. Hi, oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for Thank that you. lovely introduction, Yolanda. Thank Hi, you. <laughs> cool. So you can start sharing your screen. Brilliant. Let's do that. So just excuse me. Uh, so, so welcome, everybody. I'll introduce myself properly uh, in, a, in a minute to you. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Yolanda. So just excuse me for a couple of seconds. We've, we've all done enough of these webinars. So just excuse me while I just share. No problem. This, um, the, it's been requested that the meeting is recorded. It will be recorded. Thank you for the request. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you, you don't have to listen if you don't want to. <laughs> So Yolanda, uh, let me just make sure that you can see that slide okay? That's perfect. And I'll just make sure, can you see it moving yet? We can see it moving, it's Brilliant. perfect. So I will be leaving the stage, thank you. Thank you, so thank you so much Yolanda and thank you to Wrights and thank you to Kerr and thank you to y Yolanda who's, uh, who's hosting the, the webinar, uh, uh, sorry Celeste who's hosting the webinar uh, tonight, I think they're both in uh, Pretoria. I'm in Birmingham which is in the, in the centre of England if you, uh, if you haven't been there. I would love to be um, meeting you face to face uh, because I've been to South Africa three times and I absolutely love it, it's one of the best places I've ever been and one of the best things other than the food and the drink uh, and the uh, and the scenery is I just absolutely love the South African accent. It is literally the best accent in the world. So so I'm really sorry that we're having to communicate like this through a chat box. But it's been lovely listening to Yolanda and Celeste uh, talk uh, to begin with. I can listen to them all night. So I, I've got a bit of a Birmingham accent. So um, I don't know if any of you watched Peaky Blinders. Uh, that, that's uh, that's uh, set uh, set set in Birmingham. So uh, unfortunately, we haven't got any subtitles. So <laughs> I, shall, uh, I shall try and speak clearly. So uh, thank you very much for introducing me, um, Celeste. Uh, so um, sorry, Yolanda. So, um, so yeah, I, so my main job nowadays is that I, I uh, work for Demplan, which is, uh, as, as, um, as, uh, as Landa said, is the, uh, the biggest payment plan provider for private dentistry in, uh, in the UK. Uh, that picture you see in the middle is uh, Birmingham Dental School, where I've been teaching today with a chap called Professor Burke, who you may, Professor Trevor Burke, who you may uh, well know, on a master's course. Um, and I'm part-time at King's College in the postgrad department there. 
and I'm still a tiny, tiny bit of a GDP as as well. Uh, you can see me there. You can tell how long ago that picture was taken. Um, the, the the lack of PPE. I haven't even got a mask on at all there for uh, for uh, for that patient. So now, obviously, I'd have the full uh, the full hazmat uh, suit on. Um, I, I was ju just uh, just chatting to the ladies and hear that you um, shut down for three weeks um and um uh, and, uh, prescriptions only but we we um in england had to shut down for three months um and still catching up uh, i think it's something like 30 million missed appointments so uh, so all the practices are, are, cat, uh, are catching up and we have to leave uh, a, a minimum of 10 minutes between every patient so really busy practices are struggling to uh, are struggling to see all of those patients so yeah it's a, a, a tough a tough time across the globe obviously the biggest national um, uh, international and professional catastrophe that we've uh, that we've ever faced so so let's not talk about that tonight let's talk about restorative dentistry uh it's my favorite subject um i'm a bit a bit of a geek so apologies for that uh, in advance uh tonight's um webinar is sponsored by kerr and yolanda is the is the kerr uh, expert uh, so if there are any difficult questions i shall refer you directly to her um and uh, and i believe we've got one of the um, senior representatives of, of, of kerr themselves in south africa as uh, as well so i'm going to be focusing entirely on um uh, a range of kerr products but these are products that i've used myself i own where well, i've done lots of lectures i've forgotten lost count of how many um, lectures, uh, webinars that I've done since o over the last uh, few years, um, uh, uh, last couple of years really, um, and, um, and I've done over a thousand hands-on courses as well. So I only talk about things that I use and I love, and I get a bit too much passion, pa a bit too passionate about it. So Yolanda, please th throw a digital bucket of water over me if I get too excited about a shade guide or something like that. <laughs> So, um, so lots of different products, um, and so the plan is uh, the title, sort of top tips for direct composites, is to really um, uh, exactly as as Yolanda said, was to uh, to focus on all the key areas, entirely using clinical cases, um, using clinical cases that all from my own, uh, all from my own practice. So any errors that you spot will be my own errors. Uh, you'll see there a dentist with, in fact, that's my wife. She's a dentist as well we've fallen into that stereotype of, uh, of marrying another dentist. Uh, so, uh, so she's got sort of more, uh, more up-to-date PPR there. And I'm actually the patient in that picture as well. So for the next hour, we're going to talk about everything right from shade selection, right the way through to finishing polishing direct composites. We're going to look at anteriors and posteriors. And it's a bit of a shopping trip, if you like, um, because we've got a little basket there. So I'm going to focus on, uh, although we kind of cover 10 areas, it's going to be 20 different items, which I would suggest are absolutely uh, almost indispensable items, which will not only uh, improve clinical outcomes, but will also improve your enjoyment of doing restorative dentistry, regardless of the, the levels of PPE and uh, other things that we have to cope with. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, and again, please type in any questions, uh, anything that, uh, that uh, you, you can't understand because of my accent or, or equally um, anything where, where uh, you, you've been uh, uh, informed of something that's the opposite. Let's have that discussion uh, via, the, uh, via the chat box. But I say, unfortunately, I can't hear your lovely accents. So let's kick off right at the start. So uh, with shade selection, um, and so now Kerr have really sort of led the way with regard to composite shades. Kerr were the first company ever to be able to match their composites to the, uh, the Vita shade guide. And, uh, and the first material uh, was Herculite. So that was the first one ever that came in the Vita shades. Uh, and again, they've just continued to revolutionize um, their, their shade taking. That picture you see there are some um, Harmonize, uh, uh, that's one of Kerr's uh, latest composites there. Um, and we can see those are shade tabs made of composite, how well they match the, the Vita shade guide. And with Harmonize, which I'll talk about in a bit, you've got the entire shade range for layering um, and all applications for anterior and posteriors. But what Kerr have realized 
is that uh, again uh, we're dentists we like to keep things nice and simple uh, i think that's the subtitle of this uh, of this presentation um and so uh, again not every patient is going to need a whole range of shades so i'm absolutely delighted uh, to introduce and i think this is coming your way towards the end of the month this is a brand new uh, material called opti shade it's called simply shade in the in the uk um and this is a composite that has just three shades light medium and dark and you might think well that's that's not going to be enough for all of my uh, all of my cases but it absolutely is because the way that it's been designed with the filler particle technology and the translucent resin matrix it's designed to take on the uh, the natural color of the surrounding tooth so it enables you in just three shades light medium and dark to do all 16 shades in the in the shade guide so it really immediately simplifies uh, decision making. Now, um, you know, I'm a general dental practitioner, like uh, probably most of you are as uh, as well. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we're fairly sceptical uh, sort of people, I think. You know, we, we rely on predictability. That's one of the most important things at dentistry, that things work first time uh, every time. So I always like to test things out um, uh, sometimes on patients but sometimes on extracted teeth as a, as in this example here so I thought I'd put um, uh, OptiShade to uh, to the test and so just prep the cavity in an extracted tooth uh, and then if we we um, just uh, fill the cavity in the normal way and then if we look at E there so that's what the the color of the composite prior to light curing and then with F light curing you can see straight away down to G an immediate color change uh, and do try this for yourselves on your patients or on an extracted tooth or even on a plastic tooth as well it's absolutely superb this really clever uh, technology enables it to take on the color of the surrounding tooth so then um, I went even more OCD uh, stored it in water for a couple of days as well and so uh, so you can see the composite change color with the tooth again uh, and the final picture there the black and white one just shows just how good the shade matching is with Kerr's composites uh, because obviously if it's black and white value is the most important factor uh, in uh, in shade taking and we can see we've got an almost perfect value uh, match there the other thing about this material uh, is it is so beautifully sculptable. I uh, get really excited about it. I, I have actually tried every single composite in the uh, in the world. Uh, definitely should get out more. Um, but uh, again, you know, as exp experienced clinicians, we know straight away when there's something we like. And you will absolutely love the handling properties of this. Just not sticky beautifully sculptable will hold its shape all day long uh, and then you've got this amazing color change technology as well so it's, it's an absolute dream to use so let's just look at some shade taking tips as well so now we can use a shade guide of course but probably the simplest and most accurate way of taking shade is actually to use a sample of the material again this is really super easy uh, with um, uh, with OptiShade uh, because you just need to choose one of one of three. Light cure the sample as well because you can get a little shade shift on polymerization with any material, uh, much less so with OptiShade, uh, almost imperceptible um, uh, uh, with with a little a little sample like this. Um, but um, but with some materials, especially translucent materials, you can get really quite a, a shift in color and translucency. So light cure the sample. And obviously we do this as quickly as we can um, before the tooth has the time to dehydrate. Much less of a problem for, uh, for a, a posterior tooth compared to an anterior tooth, because again, the, the, the color match is, uh, again, this is why it's nice. It's just a simple material. But of course, one of the most important things about any restoration is to get the shape right as well. Uh, we can get the shade wrong if we want to, um, but, um, but that's going to be less noticeable. But if we get the shape right, it's going to uh, diffract the light there and the restoration should hopefully disappear uh, in front of the, the patient's eyes. So let's move on to the next stage now. So we've taken the, the shade immediately. Um, and so now we can numb the patient up and then do some cavity preparation. So let's look at another um, uh, case now. So we've got a little cavity there um, adjacent to that fissure sealant. 
Now, magnification, you know, this is one of the annoying things about, uh, I would love now if we were all in the same room um, to, to ask a show of hands, how many of you use uh, magnification? Uh, hopefully it's most of you, um, but um, it, does, it does depend. Probably only about 10% of dentists in the United Kingdom um, uh, wear magnification. And of course, for those of you who do, you'll know this is absolutely the number one thing um, to uh, to Im improve your outcomes, improve your posture, reduce the risk of uh, any sort of uh, musculoskeletal problems, which, as we know, is the number one reason for early retirement in dentistry. So um, the nice thing about Kerr is because they're literally one of the uh, biggest manufacturing and distrib distribution companies in the in the world that they make so many different products uh, and under their umbrella is the Oroscoptic company uh, and some of you may have these loops I've had these now for about three years eye zooms now these were the first ever adjustable loops so you can have three four and five times magnification um, and uh, and obviously you have to have the same magnification on both eyes, otherwise your whole day is going to be some like some sort of crazy LSD trip. Um, but uh, again, most of the time I will be on three. But if I'm doing an endo or doing some fine finishing, uh, I might pop it up to to five. Um, and uh, so the nice thing about the magnification, as I say, it keeps us sitting up straight. It improves our posture. It reduces the, the risk of those musculoskeletal problem, which are an absolute plague on our profession uh, I, I'm I, I'm in my 50s now I know I look a lot older uh, but um, uh, but a lot of my colleagues have had to had to give up uh, dentistry or had to restrict the number of hours because they've been working for a long time now uh, without magnification and they and their, their their spines are literally like a question mark and they're, they're, they've got discs popping out like frisbees um, so dentistry is just so bad for your back so loops will keep us sitting up straight but they'll also uh, help us make better diagnoses better clinical decisions um, and and more enjoyable dentistry as well so with our magnification we can see there this is an occlusal and we uh, and we've checked there's no cavitation um, so with, there's no need no matter how thin it gets um, that we can uh, we can preserve that distal um, distal proximal wall there because we're going to bond to that um, and reinforce it uh, and, and it makes it a much easier restoration to do. So again, um, you don't have to take my word for it. When you do go on a hands-on course or when one of the Kerr reps comes and visits, uh, visits your practice um, uh, or, or there's a study day, um, then just have a go with this material yourself. Uh, Kerr again have got just a fantastic um, a legacy of the most sculptable and superb uh, composites to use. Um, the, the picture that you see at the top on the right is an exercise um, that I've done on hands-on courses for many years now where just a freehand build-up of, uh, of a lower molar and, and the Kerr, Kerr materials um, and uh, OxyShade is a, is a classic example of that. Uh, they're just so easy to manipulate and they will hold their shape all day long. And so you've got total control. You haven't got to worry about it slumping when you turn around to pick up your curing light. So really lovely materials. But so try it out for yourselves uh, and you'll, 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 you'll realize that I'm not, uh, I'm not joking. Um, uh, also, uh, along with the three shades, if you need to, uh, you, you've got uh, an opaque. So if you need to, you know, for example, if there's a cavity that's uh, that's got a had an old amalgam in it, and you need to opaque that out, you can use the opaque. Uh, and um, because these materials really do take on the colour of the tooth as well. Or if you've got a class three that's going all the way through, you can do the palatal surface uh, with an opaque. And they've also got a bleach shade. As, uh, uh, as well, if you need a really, really light, if you're doing some composite veneers or something like that. So with regard to the placement of the composites, uh, and the nice thing about this tooth is there were so many uh, anatomical features left, that it was really easy to shape this composite up just by looking and just running a composite instrument into the adjacent fissures. Um, trying to make sure, if you look at that disto um, buckle cusp there, there's a little blob of composite, remembering to scrape that off before we light cure, because we want to try and minimize the, the adjustment with burrs. 
So now, as I say, I've been I've been a, a dentist for 30 years. I've been a, a lecturer for uh, over 20 years. And uh, over the years, I've realized that um, probably the best cases that I can ever show are the ones where I've made mistakes, um, because those are the ones that you, me and everybody else learns the most from. So that case, you'll probably noticed uh, I didn't have um, a rubber dam on for that case. And you can see there there's some damage uh, to the gingival margin, which obviously will heal, but that can only have been caused by me splashing the etch uh, around too, uh, too, too much. Um, so, uh, so which takes us nicely on to isolation. So this is this is a case that really couldn't have been done um, without without some uh, some decent isolation. So what we're looking at there is a lower molar, a lower third molar. It's rotated, it's buckly placed, and as we can see, we've got some um, early carious lesions there as well. So this uh, this is um, item number three on the on the shopping list of the. Um, a must have purchases uh, i would say top of the list i think will be uh, would be uh, magnification but these soft clamps are absolutely superb um uh, they're they're universal they will fit on molars premolars upper teeth lower teeth left uh, left and right they're nicely contoured i don't know if you can see me on the webcam but the as you can see the tines on the uh, on the clamp do that you can see that they're slightly roughened as well so these will fit beautifully on broken down teeth partially erupted teeth um, they're just absolutely superb to use really really almost a universal rubber dam clamp and of course if it's an occlusal uh, nice and easy one hole in the dam clamp into the dam and then straight onto the tooth, dead easy. It's going to take 10 seconds, and it's probably going to save 10 minutes at least of clinical time. So an aerosol generating procedure. We didn't even know that phrase, did we, uh, you know, uh, 18 months ago? But now, you know, you can't, uh, you, you can't read a single article without discussing it so there we see an aerosol generating procedure there uh, with uh, with air abrasion using aluminium uh, oxide um, 25 micron and so you can see I've done the preparation entirely with air abrasion no burrs uh, at all and it gives us that lovely smooth um, cavity form that you can't get uh, using um, uh, using a burr uh, at all so really really nice to use and again if we're in the same room I would ask you how many of you are using air abrasion or air polishing in practice when we meet up hopefully so and then in this case it was just a simple restoration it was a nice shallow cavity um, uh, another favorite of mine from Kerr is their purple etch that's how fussy I am. Um, the, the reason I love the purple etch is because it's just the right viscosity. I don't want etch being too runny and I don't want it being too thick uh, and not wetting the surface. Uh, the purple etch is lovely. It doesn't run away. It goes wherever you want and then obviously wash and dry. And in this case, I've just done basically a, a preventive resin restoration with a few layers of a filled opaque um, flowable composite material applied on the tip of a perio probe and then just light cured. Uh, nice and controlled, no occlusal adjustment, ready for the next patient. So let's switch now to anterior composites and look at the same sort of um, same sort of stages with regard to anteriors. So the first thing again is shade taking. So we can go uh, we can go uh, all the way by using a layering technique if we want to. So if we're going to do that. Again, using either the shade guide, um, Harmonizer has got a really nice, um, really nice uh, shade system uh, with it. Or you can use samples. Um, and so, uh, so if you're going to do that, use your dentine sample, it, the, your opaque material in the mid crown, and your translucent material near the incisal edge, so you can get an idea of getting the right shade. But the nice thing, of course, is that OptiShade, because of its resin and um, filler particle technology. You can, it will take on the color of the tooth um, that you're placing it into as well. So really simplifying it. Um, preparation, again, Kerr make a whole range of burrs. Obviously, rights have, you know, uh, even more extensive range of burrs as well. But we want to keep our preparation as minimally invasive as possible, removing the existing restoration and then just placing our labial bevel which will increase the surface area to bond to, but it will also allow the restoration to blend uh, from the tooth. 
into the um, uh, in, into the restoration with no perceptible margin. So just using the composite finishing burr there, uh, fine com ultra fine composite finishing burr to just place a little bevel margin on the, the labial surface. And no need for any other bevels because there's so much retention there in that particular cavity that uh, that, will, that will stay put nicely. So now uh, rubber dam really has, has had a bit of a, a renaissance. As we know, it's been around for 150 years. Uh, again, I don't know the figures in South Africa, uh, but, but globally rubber dam is used by about 10% of, uh, of dentists. Um, and uh, uh, even for endodontics as, uh, as well. Um, so if you if you're if you're struggling with rubber dam or you've never really never really sort of got on with it, then a great way to gain confidence um, and predictability is to use Kerr's OptiDam. With this one, you don't even have to punch the holes. You literally just snip off uh, these uh, these little uh, pointy bits there, um, and and then just it's just so unbelievably easy to place. And it comes with a there's a frame in the kit as well, a plastic frame. It's just so easy to place. As we can see, there's no there's no clamps here. It will just zip down over the teeth beautifully. Now, adhesive technology. I, I would say, you know, obviously the pandemic, has, has, as I said, has created a professional crisis. But I would say from a from a restorative dentistry point of view, there's probably never been a better time to be a dentist in the history of dentistry. Because there are so many new materials, equipment and technologies uh, that we've got at our disposal. Obviously, the digital uh, the digital era, which has been promised for so many, many decades, is finally here. People are adopting digital dentistry. The master students that are, uh, we were with today, we did a whole afternoon of digital um, uh, digital scanning of, uh, of some preparations that they'd done in the morning. And already half of them were using scanning for their orthodontic, um, uh, orthodontic cases. And it's the same thing with direct restorative as well, um, because we've got uh, not only universal composites now, uh, like uh, like OptiShade, uh, but we've also got universal adhesives. Now, if you haven't used a universal adhesive uh, before, these are defined as an adhesive where you can use um, phosphoric acid etch, um, or you can selectively etch the enamel only um, with the same. So you can do total etch or selective etch, or you can use the material as a self-etching adhesive. So it enables you to do whatever you want. Um, so again, just, just making our lives uh, easier. Uh, and so, uh, so in this particular case, I thought I'd give it a try by actually using just the resin, which is acidic. Uh, it's got the acidic primer within it. Um, and just to see how this one does over, over the years with regard to any marginal staining. So giving that a nice practice. Again, it's useful if you photograph these cases, keep good records of what you did, and then you know what works uh, and what doesn't work. So now, um, I'm not sure about South Africa, but I was very disappointed to um, to, to hear that um, that Kerr had stopped making these for the UK market, compo rollers. So I get, I've still got mine and I've got loads of tips, so it's going to keep me going for a while. Um, so, uh, so if they are thinking of, uh, of, of not selling it anymore, buy, buy as many as you can now. The compo roller is fantastic. It's just literally just like a you know rolling pin, really. And for these anteriors, I get quite excited about um, uh, about sort of rolling the composite uh, against the cavity uh, cavity margins and disposable silicon tips in lots of different uh, different sizes. Um, but Yolanda will be able to tell us what the situation is with regard to that. Um, so, but what is definitely available uh, internationally, uh, absolutely everywhere, is the is the fantastic disc system for, from uh, from Optident, uh, the OptiDisc, which has been around for a lot of years now, and has everything from eighty to ten microns, coarse, medium, uh, and then the um, the fine and the ultra fines, uh, and then you've got two. Um, mandrels as well of course you can reverse the disc nicely as well so you can do the palatal surface and these discs as I'm sure many of you are using them already are an absolute dream to use a more recent product from um, from Kerr is the Opti one step polishers and these you, obviously you can get the, the silicon tips which are impregnated with uh, abrasive particles in flame disc or cut patterns and they will just give you an absolutely fabulous shine 
So you can see on removal of the OptiDam just how clever it is. It's, uh, it's got this nicely sort of, uh, if you like, little collar around the teeth. So it just basically inserts itself into the sulcus so you don't have to worry about floss ligatures. Uh, and when we remove it, uh, just pull it away and then just snip it with scissors. And it's nice and easy to, uh, to remove. So this is this is one of those cases that you often see on Instagram. Excuse me, I'll just have a little drink. It's really hot today in England, which is we've had an absolutely rubbish summer. It's rained nearly every day. Um, and when we do want it to rain, the final day of the test yesterday against India, where we needed rain to save the test match, beautiful sunshine, and we got skittled out and lost by about 150. So anyway, let's get off that subject. Um, so this this is the kind of case that you quite often see on uh, on Instagram, um, where the the pre op and the post op <laughs> are about half an hour apart. Uh, so so this is an immediate um, an immediate post op. But of course, we want to monitor this restoration for five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years to see how it's doing uh, over over the over the years. So we're doing well. Let's see how we're doing well for time. So yeah, fantastic. So we'll have plenty of time, uh, plenty of time for uh, for questions. So what I want to do now is finish um, uh, our other uh, top uh, top twenty uh, materials and equipment by looking at a more complicated case. So this is a patient who attended in severe pain, and of course. We've had a lot of uh, we've had a lot of those, uh, and again, your three week lockdown must have must have felt like three months. Not been able to see your patients, not been able to treat them with anything other than antibiotics. But this has been an absolutely massive problem in the United Kingdom with three months closures uh, in England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland. It was only in uh, it was only in Wales where they could still see their patients but they were very limited into what they could actually do for them um, particularly with regard to aerosol generating procedures so you know the, the supplies of antibiotics unfortunately are, uh, are, are are dwindling massively so this this has been a real issue the three-month closure and of course some of these patients ha have had real trouble um, uh, with pain, with fractured cusps, with, with sharp cusps, uh, with all, all sorts of issues. Again, and I'm sure you're finding this is the same, um, the delayed detection and diagnosis of uh, oral malignancies as, as well. Uh, we're seeing now um, patients attending the hospitals with you know, really quite advanced um, T4, uh, uh, T4 lesions. Uh, so, um, so yeah, it's a tough time. Same thing, it seems that lockdown diets uh, lockdown oral hygiene habits have really, you know, uh, some some patients who have been stable with periodontal disease, with uh, with with caries, uh, have suddenly um, things have gone in completely the wrong direction. So I'm sure it's exactly the same way you are. Again, it'd be lovely to sit down and have a chat about this over 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 dinner uh, and some drinks, maybe uh, some fabulous uh, South African wine, perhaps. Um, but um, but again, uh, I, I think globally we, we are facing uh, you know this real legacy of the pandemic and the effect that it's had on the profession, but the effect that it's had on all of our patients as well. So let's finish by looking at this complicated case. So this patient fortunately wasn't in pandemic conditions. So I was able to treat this patient immediately and get him out of pain. So uh, this is one of those patients where he's got super duper pain, where, where we've got, uh, we've got uh, periapical changes, but we've also got live pulp as well. So this patient was in a lot of discomfort. So the first thing is obviously we need to do the endo in this. This this was not a reversible uh, pulpitis, um, uh, and uh, and so endo to begin with. Now one of the nice things about the soft clamp that I referred to previously is you can see it on the X-ray. So from a probity point of view, anybody who's asking questions, yep, absolutely, rubber dam was used, uh, but also it's it's partially um, radiolucent as well. So you still get diagnostic information, uh, even if your clamp is maybe, I don't know, super, superimposed on the apex or something like that. And they are just so easy to, to use. I absolutely love these clamps for everything. So uh, now amalgam removal, uh, we're um, in the, uh, I don't know, again, uh, uh, forgive me for not knowing what the situation is in uh, in South Africa, but uh, but in Europe, 
um, uh, are following the Minamata Treaty, and I'm sure South Africa was uh, were signatories to the Minamata Treaty, 130 countries around the world were, uh, were to reduce the amount of um, mercury in all sorts of uh, products, including dental, um, including dental amalgam. In the UK now, just out of interest, it's uh, it's illegal to use amalgam on a primary tooth, on a child under 15, and on pregnant and breastfeeding um, ladies, but uh, uh, we didn't do that in the first place anyway. So, uh, so yeah, so that and that came in um, uh, just a, just a couple of years ago. So now there are, for the first time in history, restrictions in the UK on the use of amalgam, which is the most commonly used restorative material um, in the in the UK, um, or indeed worldwide. So. Um, so even if uh, uh, an amalgam ban ever happens, and I don't think it will be banned, certainly not in the UK, it will be phased out. Again, I'd love to ask how many of you are amalgam free in your practices. That would be really nice to, to know. I've worked with loads of South African dentists over the years uh, on hands-on courses, uh, and you're absolutely amazing. Um, some of the absolute best dentists I've ever s uh, seen. Um, their, 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 uh, their, their preps, their, their particularly composites, absolutely stunning composite work, uh, have done their undergrad training in, in South Africa. There's lots of South African dentists in in uh, in the UK, as you probably know. Presumably, it's the weather that you come for. <laughs> I hope it's not the weather or the food. And so, uh, uh, but yeah, you're very very welcome because uh, because absolutely stunning clinical skills. But even if amalgam is banned um, uh, one day or phased out, we'll be we'll be using it for the rest of our clinical careers, regardless of what age we are, um, because uh, because there are there are billions of amalgam restorations uh, that will fail and need to be replaced. So on doing so, we can use one of Kerr's other nice products with, with, with this uh, amalgam uh, uh, removal burr, which absolutely flies through um, alloys and removal of crowns as, as well, just saves so much time. So now with this, uh, with this um, cavity, as you can see, there's not much residual tooth tissue left. Now, um, again, this tooth is not suitable for um, a conventional indirect restoration. If if I prepare this tooth for a crown, basically there's going to be nothing left. It's going to be um, it's going to be just a post crown, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a direct onlay um, in in composite. Um, when we're doing our onlays, if we if we're going to use uh, composite, direct composite, or an amalgam, bonded amalgam maybe, or uh, normal feldspathic porcelain, then we're going to need enough room for the material. So I'm doing a controlled reduction there, 1.5 to 2 millimetres. The only thing that we can really get away with, with small reductions, a millimetre or so, is if we're using gold or zirconia. Um, the, uh, some of the absolute best burrs that I've got in my kit are my tungsten carbide burrs, which I get those from Kerr. Um, and, and they are absolutely superb for, for bevels, for resistance grooves, um, for smoothing line angles, finishing preparations, finishing shoulders, and these sort of depth cuts. They're absolutely superb because, of course, as they're bladed, they cut rather than, uh, rather than a braid. Uh, so, yeah, they're absolutely superb, superb. So uh, I just want to pause for a, a few minutes. Uh, again, I would love to ask you this question. Um, how many of you are using the Supermat system? Because for me, uh, again, Yolanda won't maybe be able to tell us if it's got a different name in the um, uh, in the uh, in South Africa. I don't think it has. Um, but this is absolutely one of Kerr's best products. Um, I was introduced to this uh, 25 years ago by the chap I was teaching with today, Professor Trevor Burke, and we use this for the vast majority of my large uh, composite restorations. It's just so unbelievably easy to use. It's a nice thin matrix system. Uh, so you, uh, it's a lot thinner, uh, 0.038 uh, uh, millimetres. Uh, you've got uh, six different patterns, but the main one that you, you, you use or reorder is the green one with the yellow top as well. And I'm sure, again, Yolanda will be able to tell us uh, that uh, they always have nice offers on on the on the uh, on the supermat kit um, with with refill packs, and you will just literally, if you're not using it already, you will use this every single day 
um, uh, without question. And if you're using amal doing amalgams and composites, you'll be able to use it for your amalgams and your composites as well. It's just such a brilliant matrix system. It's retainerless, as you can see, so you've got no leverage. It's nicely curved, so it'll give you a lovely, natural, tight contact. It's really easy to burnish against the adjacent tooth. In really deep cavities, it will give you that really lovely cervical seal. When you tighten it, it tightens cervically and leans against the adjacent tooth, so it doesn't pull away from the adjacent tooth, which uh, these two uh, ancient matrix bands. Now, as you've probably realised already, I'm far too uh, I'm far too uh, OCD about dentistry. Definitely should get out more. But I've got a real problem with the Seekland matrix band and the Toffelmar matrix band, particularly for composite restorations, because they will give us open contacts, light contacts, contacts only at the marginal ridge poor cervical seals um, and and again the leverage if you're doing an amalgam it's just too stressful the nice thing about the super mat as we'll see in a second is it's really super easy to remove as well and the nice the other nice thing as well again illustrating that picture because this is a retainerless system you just throw it away so you've got no issues with uh, infection control you've got no issues with sharps injuries of of re-threading uh, matrix bands as uh, as well so back to Purple Etch. Uh, again, I've already said how much I like it. So it's the 15 seconds Total Etch. Um, and obviously that's its pH if you're interested, <laughs> which I'm sure you're not. And why would you be? Uh, so um, now in this cavity where we haven't got much residual tooth tissue and we haven't got much resistance and retention form, we're asking a lot of the adhesive bond. So I'm going to use for this case occurs uh, a classic um, adhesive OptiBond FL. Absolutely no rule about you having different adhesives, having a universal, having something like uh, OptiBond um, uh, one step uh, or, or having um, a, a three step OptiBond FL. So with OptiBond FL, you've got your acid etch that we've just done, and then you've got your separate primer and your separate adhesive. In live lectures, I quite often get asked the question, which is the best bonding system? Um, and the answer really is, um, you can make a very strong argument that it is OptiBond FL. Because in all of the research that's done in laboratories, um, and they do the bond strength tests, OptiBond FL is almost always the, the control, because it does give the strongest bond strengths of any uh, adhesive. Again, we need to follow the instructions carefully, but if we follow the instructions, which again are not too tricky, uh, we get the best bond strengths that we can possibly get to enamel and denting. So again, I would love to ask you the question, show of hands, how many of you are using a bulk fill material? Um, now I'm a massive fan of bulk fills, they've been around for about 12 years now. Um, and Sonic Fill, which is another Kerr, Kerr product, is my absolute favourite bulk fill because you can fill the whole cavity with it, with it in one in one increment. Um, designed in partnership with, a, with an American dentist called Ron Jackson, who's absolutely amazing. I've been uh, stalking him for, 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 for years, uh, uh, conferences, and he's, he's, he was a real pioneer, brilliant lecturer, love listening to him. Now, Sonic Fill is a bulk fill, uh, clever technology. Um, the the handpiece um, uh, delivers, which just fits onto your normal high speed handpiece uh, coupling, or you can have a separate coupling. Um, it just literally applies sonic energy to the composite. Again, you've got a limited number of shades, so it will it will it's uh, uh, almost exclusively for posterior use, and it is just so fast. Um, and you just literally inject it into the cavity. And as we know, most posterior teeth, well, mo all teeth, uh, virtually all teeth are in the A range, and most teeth uh, are not far off the A2, A3 spectrum either. So the way that it works um, is it applies sonic energy. The handpiece applies sonic energy to the composite so that it goes into the cavity running. So you get really fabulous marginal adaptation. Um, and, and then when you remove the handpiece, uh, you, uh, it goes back to a normal, normal viscosity, so you can just pack it in place. So it's absolutely a dream to use. Five millimeters depth of cure. So unless your cavity is a really giant one, when you can do it in two increments, you can fill on almost any cavity in one increment. 
And the reason you can do that is because it's called a, you know, a bulk fill material. It is a bulk fill material. It's a nano hybrid if you're excited about uh, that. Highly filled, so it will give you the strength that you need for posterior uh, loading and low polymerization shrinkage, almost the perfect polymerization shrinkage. Don't let anybody, even Kerr, and they never would, um, sell you a no-shrink composite um, uh, like cured composite uh, because, uh, because composites, when they're set, they absorb moisture and they expand by about 1%. So what we're after is a low-shrinking composite, which then, as it absorbs moisture over about the next 50 hours or so, um, you get an almost net zero volumetric change. So the, the, the bulk fill material has got low uh, shrinkage which gives it low polymerization shrinkage stress so it's not going to pull away from the cavities it's not going to de deflect cusps it's not going to cause any voids which might cause post-op pain on a tooth that has got a pulp as we know this one hasn't when you're starting with sonic fill you uh, you can adjust the sonic energy when you get used to it you'll just stick it on five all the time but when you get used to it getting used to it just stick it on three just so you get used to controlling the flow of the material uh, and as I say the sonic energy just makes it going nice and runny uh, so it just adapts to the cavity beautifully so uh, we do, we're doing well for time we're doing well for time shaping up it's a lower premolar so it's nice and easy so we do lower four so we're literally just looking at two pits a mesial and a distal pit and then light curing now light curing often in many papers and lectures is, is kind of an overlooked stage and uh, you know you do your filling you spend hours doing your doing your uh, sh composite shaping and then light cure but light curing is such an important stage as well and it's very important not to economize on lights so we want to use a high quality light uh, we want the light tip as close as possible to the tooth we want it perpendicular to the surface and we want to certainly give the final increment 60 seconds cure um, again, um, uh, uh, Wrights sell a range of different curing lights from different suppliers, and this is this is uh, one of the the, the luxury um, uh, top of the range lights. Uh, and I would recommend that you shop at that end of the spectrum, because what you want is you want an output above a thousand milliwatts per square centimeter. Um, and the nice thing about the Demi Plus, as in this example, is you just it's just rapid charge, really really easy to use and you're going to get this um, high output but also a uniform beam profile as well so when you test the lights you know that you're getting the output across the whole of the the face of the um, uh, uh, of the tip um, it's very very important when you are testing lights and it's it's recommended to test lights regularly uh, you can buy yourself a portable radiometer or you can get uh, inbuilt ones with with some curing lights Kerr make a nice um, inbuilt one uh, as, as well um, you never want to go below 400 milliwatts per square centimeter if it's below 400 it will not polymerize a two millimeter thickness of composite of course it'll polymerize the surface but you just won't know that the restoration has got that as it's termed the, the so soggy bottom so light queuing very important so the super mat is just so easy to use in every respect uh, imagine this was a big amalgam we would be starting to get a bit nervous now especially if we were using a toffle mark or a sequeland um, and we're removing the matrix uh, and uh, and the leverage is the amalgam going to break um, and uh, but the nice thing about the super mat of course is you just literally undo it um, again, it'd be nice to see this on a hands-on course, but you can see this on videos and, uh, or demonstrations um, uh, at, and um, online. Really, really easy to remove. And then you can just remove one side and then just floss the other side out really, really easily. Shaping, finishing and polishing. We've got the rubber dam on. We can't check the occlusion um, until the rubber dam is removed. So we want it to be as close as possible. So we need virtually no adjustment. So again, we can use our nice Kerr products. Uh, number 20, oh, we're all ready. We're all ready, ready. Good, good timing, good timing as we're coming into the station uh, with 10 minutes to go. Um, so um, the Occlu brush is an absolutely lovely polisher. 
As I'm sure you've found, there are not many good polishes for composites on the posterior teeth, um, you know, because the silicon points, if they're too pointy, they tend to go uh, go blunt and they're not much use again. The Acclu brush is absolutely superb. They're autoclavable, so you've got multiple, multiple uses as many times as you like, really, um, and they don't lose their shape as well. So they're silicon with impregnated diamond particles, so you can get a really, really fabulous shine. And of course, you can use them on anteriors as well. Really handy on the palatal surface of a big class four or something like that. Uh, and so the Aclu brush uh, is, is our 20th product. Is, is an absolute, uh, absolute winner. So the other nice thing um, about modern composites, and Sonic Fill is a good example of this, is, uh, is their radio opacity. Um, and so we can see the restoration. Uh, the reason I've chosen this particular clinical case is, is because it's adjacent to, you could argue that the gold crown is a minimally invasive restoration. Um, it's not taking too much residual tooth tissue uh, away, but obviously aesthetically it doesn't look very nice. But also it's much more difficult to monitor because we don't know what's going on under that. And I'm sure we've all on multiple occasions you know taking crowns off and you look underneath and it's game over it's, it's, it's like soup uh, underneath there uh, and so the nice thing about composites modern composites the filler particle technology enables them to be really radio opaque so you can monitor them easily no restoration is going to last forever we, we, we know that um, but we can monitor them nice and easily we can uh, check on the marginal adaptation uh, and we can just make sure uh, that they, they're continuing to do the job for many, many years, decades, hopefully. So very important uh, uh, to uh, to have a nice radio opaque material. And again, all of the Kerr products. This is this this is this is not this is the only picture that isn't my picture. There's a picture uh, that's been done by Kerr, just demonstrating uh, that uh, that the new one, uh, OptiShade. Um, as I say, it's simply shading. That picture is exactly the same thing, has greater radio opacity than the enamel. So you can really monitor these uh, restorations uh, brilliantly over the, uh, over the years. And this is the restoration at three years. Again, you never see three years uh, on Facebook or Instagram, do you? But it's really important that we don't just look at pictures where, where, they go, where the fillings look nice 10 minutes later or the day later or a week later. We want to be looking years down the line, three years, four years, five years, 10 years. Uh, and then, you know, we're dentists by the time we get to 15 years uh, or 20 years. We're starting to get slightly happy and confident about that uh, about that technology um but again other than a little bit of marginal staining it's doing the job it's always going to look nicer than the adjacent tooth as well it's a minimally invasive restoration we've preserved the maximum amount of tooth tissue and the other thing is the beauty about going direct which is what this presentation has been about entirely is you've always got a plan b you can always do an onlay prep. You can always do a three quarter prep. You can always do a crown prep, but you can never undo these preps. So if we use uh, direct as our default setting, then it leaves all of those options. It's minimally invasive. And for the majority of the time, it just it just works. Uh, it just works perfectly. Um, and then we don't have to worry. Patients out of pain. They've got a tooth colored restoration. They've preserved the maximum amount of tooth tissue on a broken down tooth. Hopefully the endo uh, will uh, will work as well. I'm not an endodontist, but I do like it. Uh, occasional bit of endo. I will certainly want to do it all day. Uh, but uh, but yeah, once I get into it, I actually quite like it. And of course, endodontics as well. Again, uh, chat to Yolanda and the Kerr team because they have literally just got the whole spectrum of endodontic equipment as uh, as well and of course right sell pretty much everything everything under the sun um so um uh, and endodontics of course with rotary uh, night eyes and and with uh, thermal condensation again it's another reason that I, as i said at the start i think take the get the pandemic in our rear view mirror there's probably never ever been a better time to be a dentist in the history of dentistry so that's probably a nice optimistic place to finish and move on to questions. I finished five minutes early, so that, that's that's fashionably early uh, in uh, in England. Um, so hopefully uh, that's given you some tips uh, from everything from shade selection. We've looked at prep, 
uh, rubber dam techniques, a uh, matrix technique focusing um, on the particularly on the super map technique, bonding. We've looked at uh, we've looked at uh, um, universal adhesives. Uh, we've looked at um, uh, uh, three step um, adhesives, gold standard adhesives, if you like. Lots of different materials we've looked at. We've looked at bulk fills, we've looked at layering materials, and we've looked at the fabulous new material, which I think is coming your way in just a couple of weeks, which is OptiShade. I guarantee you will love it. Um, it's just it's just so sculptable. Whatever material you're using at the moment, you, you will see the difference for definite. And if you're used to using curve, uh, curve composites, then you'll, you'll know that already. Uh, we've looked at some placement techniques, shaping techniques, so we don't have to do too much occlusal adjustments, uh, and so the restorations integrate aesthetically. We've looked at the importance of light curing and a little bit of fin finishing and polishing for anteriors and for posteriors as well. So, oh, is that an alarm? Did an alarm just go off to tell me to, to shut up? Because there's... Uh... <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. So, so that brings us very nicely. So I'm delighted the first time I've ever done a webinar. So I've done some lecturing in South Africa live, but I've never, never done a webinar to South Africa before. So I'm delighted uh, on the first time that I didn't keep you, uh, because I, I understand chatting to the ladies before that you've, you've got a lot, you've got a curfew at 10 o'clock. So, uh, so that's, uh, that, that's not good. Um, we've we've lifted all of our restrictions now in, in England. Pretty much, I mean, you, uh, mask wearing in certain shops and things is still is still compulsory. It's still compulsory in all healthcare um, premises, including dental practices. But I say we are uh, hopefully coming out um, on on of our of our third wave now. So, well, that's another positive note to finish on. Hopefully, so I'll right, stop sharing that and. Hopefully we've got one or two questions. <clears throat> so let me get rid of that. I can see Yolanda. So there we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. McKenzie. Oh, I don't is... think it's I, I don't think it's that you liked my Afrikaans accent so much. I just think you didn't like my English one. <laughs> so um so well, by a donkey that was by a good in on said by a genet. Um Yes, we do have a curfew, but it won't stop the customers from buying from us. So thank you very much. I think we would all agree that this was a very informative webinar. And thank you for sharing your clinical cases instead of just a deaf by PowerPoint slides. I'm glad that you've emphasized again the importance of magnification and not just in endodontics, in, in uh, restorative dentistry as well. The rubber dam important part of success and with the soft clamps and the optodam from Kerr, it's much easier than what customers assume it would be. And of course, the fact that you mentioned that they should have a proper curing light. I think you have covered everything so well. There is no questions in the chat box. However, thank you to all the customers. Um, that has sent me private messages. I will answer all of those customers tomorrow in an email. Um, we will email the entire Cur booklet with promos to all of the customers tomorrow. I'm super excited about the simplicity of the OptiShade composite that we will be launching mid-September. We will be launching it in capsules only, the light, medium, 20 capsules, Please, it's important to notice that these products are available in five gram and then the, the dark bleach white and universal opaque will be in 10 capsules. Just to inform the customers, those soft lamps are in the booklet. We indeed still sell the compo roller and additional tips for the compo roller, which is a conical tip and a cylindrical tip which makes it a phenomenal product in, in, in composite, in restorative dentistry. Uh, Super mat is still available in South Africa. The handle at one stage wasn't available on its own, so therefore it became less popular. However, the handles are now available on its own. You've also asked about bulk fill in South Africa. It has become very popular in South Africa, and I couldn't agree with you that Sonic Bulkful is an amazing product. It will be available uh, from Wright Milner soon. We will be relaunching the Sonic Full 2, 
with a very good deal where you get the handpiece and the coupling for free. And the handpiece is worth a lot, isn't it? It's hundreds yes. of pounds. Yes. Um, so let me just see. So everyone is thanking you for a very nice webinar. That's fantastic. I wish I wish you could hear them say it in in uh, their South African. In Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, this lacquer. <laughs> So thank you very much again for all the customers taking the time until eight o'clock in the evening after a tiring day at the practice for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Thank you very much. Okay. Keep well. Will do.